Hello everyone and welcome back to my another tutorial. We haven't seen for a while because I was pretty busy, but I haven't forgot you. Remember, in the previous tutorial, you can find the link here somewhere on the screen, I already made a GAN introduction tutorial where I showed you how we can develop and train a simple GAN network to generate uh, digits from MNIST dataset. We give it somewhere a noise and from this noise we generate kind of the, these kind of realistic digits that is the goal. In the similar way works and other generative models as for example ChatGPT. There's many platforms where we can generate simple images that are not real. So I decided that it's gonna kind of benefit to know from basics how everything works and how to do it by ourselves. So uh, because previous tutorial was about simple GAN that we can call uh, DC GAN, it, it, it is D DC because deep convolution and it's not even worth trying a simple GAN where we can construct it from a, a simple dense networks that very soon gets overfit or exploding or vanishing gradients and we don't really want that. So in this tutorial I made I was interested actually how we can create more better generative network to work with it and it train it to work with a harder task. So for this tutorial I decided that I would like to try to generate a people faces from a profile. So I will choose to use a select a data dataset. As you can see, here is a link, and there, that's kind of very huge data set that has 10,000 different identities of images from real persons, and we want to use this data set to generate uh, kind of very realistic people, and let's see we'll, what we can achieve. And basically, I will work with 64 by 64 images before I work with, uh, as I remember, it was 28 by 28 images of uh, MNIST and before it was one channel. Right now we are working with uh, three channels, RGB and realistic images uh, to be. So it's really challenging task but if you would like to learn how it works and how, how can you do this, you can follow this tutorial. So basically you can you need to download this data set. The best way and easiest way where you can download this is from Kaggle from this link, we can link find in my text fashion tutorial below this video in the description and there's everything you need. And basically, I chose to write everything in TensorFlow. Of course, it's possible and easy to do in Torch, but I am more used with a TensorFlow, so I chose to use this platform. So basically, um, I'm not going deep into the theory and math behind this architecture, this again. I mean vegan G GP, but I will simply introduce you the code, what I use, where I use, and you can find my code on the GitHub and you can use it whatever you want. It's not supposed only to be used on uh, faces or images. You can generate anim faces. It's way simpler task because anima, well, simpler, it's simpler images. Also, you can use it to predict data uh, and uh, you can use it to predict a future data of price, for example. And of course, maybe I'll try to do this in the future to compare it with simple different networks as LSTM, um, Convolution, and VGAN, maybe Transformers, we'll see. But right now, um, I wanted to, to check the architecture, if it works correctly and so on. So I decided to follow this. Also, this took me uh, around one week to find a working version. And I don't know, it needed for me a couple of days to train. That's the worst thing that it requires a huge computational resources. And if I would increase my size of images to larger, it would exponentially increase. So you need to rely on that. So let's go to my code and let's open it. And of course, as you can see, here is my first tutorial that was about MNIST 
VCANS. And here is everything you need about VCANS GP. So basically, I will go step by step and I'll try to explain everything in human understandable language without going to the deep into math. I'll, I'll try to t tell you the idea here, what and where we do, so you can understand it more easily. So basically, here I'm importing many kind of standard uh, libraries, and here is TensorFlow, NumPy, CV2, and etc. I import the TensorBoard and some pre-processing. Well, we'll come to this later. And here is my generator and discriminator models. You can see that discriminator is also called critting, but I decided to continue it calling it a discriminator. It's a little easier for me. So here is a mixed precision. Uh, and this is actually works with the newest GPUs with RTX from RTX 2060, I believe. And this reduces our training time because uh, our input and output stays the same of the model. It's 32 uh, float and our deeper computation happens on a float. So, well, it decreases the training time by 30%, 40-30%. So it's kind of dramatically when we know that if we would increase the image size, you would need to train it for a week. So it's dramatically improved. Okay, uh, let's go first to generator and discriminator models. And uh, that's pretty the same as before when I, it was with MNIST. What I did differently, I increased the filter numbers to make a model larger a little bit and other things doesn't change and here is the discriminator and also i simply added more filters and of course you can see the dropout at the end well it's kind of experimental stuff because it not always helps but usually it helps to generalize with the models to not to achieve vanishing or exploding gradients. So that's the main reason why I added this. And it seems like, like it works for me, at least. So then there is a vegan custom TensorFlow model, but uh, let's see what we have else here. I'll come back to it a little bit later. So, uh, okay, so let's go to the beginning. Here, uh, if you don't load the data set, you might place it into the same location as I did. Uh, I see right now I removed this, uh, that's my fault, but usually there should be a data set folder and inside there should be IMG a link and select a data set with uh, two folders, such folders, and then we would be able to train it from this. And here I chose to have, as you can see, batch size are 128, uh, noise dimension of the same size, and my image shape it will be 64 by 64 and the free RGB channels. And then simply I'll save all my models in, in this location and I create this location if it doesn't exist. So next we need to create an image data generator. Basically, this is for uh, GPUs that don't have many GPU RAM. And this is because if we would try to load this kind of data set of 10,000 images, we would be out of memory, uh, a lot of us, because this requires a lot of kind of e memory uh, of size. And this kind of helps us to load images in batches and not to keep all images in the RAM. So basically it loads us the batch, it feeds the batch to the model and continues to do doing so. And then what we do, we normalize our images uh, between minus one and one. And basically we do this because our generator model has an activation function of 10H and that's basically tells us that our output is between minus one and one. And then later, when we want to extract images from noise, we need to do exactly the same. We need to add one and multiply by 255. I mean, 127.5. That's it. 
And as you can see, we can use here one augmentator. So it use uh, like a mirror of images. So it won't affect, but increase our data set dramatically. So then what we do, uh, we create this train generator and we create this from uh, my path, data set path, basically, where my images uh, exist. Uh, there's my target shape, uh, batch size, class mode, I'm not using any labels, and I would like to shuffle each epoch my data. And that's it. Then we build a generator discriminator models. Uh, we define the optimizer of Adam, and this is crucial to set a beta 1 and beta 2. And I chose to use 0.5 and 0.9. That's kind of specific for vegan GP networks. And I have didn't had the time to deeply analyze what they do, but simply they kind of uh, it's it's kind of mean of weights when we are optimizing. I'm not sure. I don't want to lie for you. And then we have a discriminator weight loss. Uh, that's pretty understandable that we produce a mean from predicted real and predicted fake. We uh, calculate the difference and we return this value. And the generator weight loss is also pretty simple. We reduce the mean from predicted fake images. These spread fake on and real are kind of out of from our model. Well, you, you'll see. And then I would like to create this results callback. So uh, I'll come back to this later. But basically, this is the one of options how we need want to track our model performance whether it trains or not so basically uh i'm creating um, images every epoch i so i chose a seed a constant number noise that i'm feeding after each epoch and i'm returning an image so to see how whether it changes into proofs or not after the epoch and I do it over, over, and over. And after all the training stuff ends, I create a GIF image where with all these 500 images. And then I create a tensor board that, of course, it's kind of valuable to track our stuff on uh, somewhere. So it's one of the best ways to track whether how my model trained, how it performed, what is the losses, and etc. So to track it there and then i created a learning rate scheduler our model needs pretty low learning rate and not too high to so that our gradients wiggle a lot and not too low so they are not improving so i decided that i'm starting with this learning rate and gradually decrease learning rate while i i think the model should be uh, learning a lot and to keep decreasing it so it learns more details well actually it's really hard to to track the the model in gans whether it trains in a good way or in bad well it's a lot of depends on the models architectures and so well, well this is one of the hardest things well, i found when working with generative networks yeah and then we are creating a vegan gp model that's a custom tensorflow uh, training loop and we call it with a compile we give it our two losses of generator discriminator. Uh, we feed it with uh, optimizer, Adam, and so on. And, and yeah, and we call it fit and wait for 500 epos it to finish. And of course, I think you're interested what were my results, but basically you need to wait a little bit. So, uh, there's still one crucial thing about this vegan GP that how we actually do the training. What's this custom model I'm using? And basically, if I'll open this, you can see that I'm inheriting this Tensorflow Keras models model object. And here I'm feeding my generator discriminator models noise dimension what's the input into our generator uh, and giving the discriminator extra steps and 
gradient banal to weights. That's specific for vegan GP architecture. So, but basically, uh, when we are training again, uh, generator model creates an image from a noise, basically. And this combinator tells whether it's a uh, real or fake. And for this reason, we need to, it's pretty slow learning of this old stuff. And to improve the stability of training and make it faster, we need to train the discriminator for some extra steps. So main idea is from vegan GP architecture. So I train it for five steps. And then I inherit everything for, for, from compile, so it would work the same way uh, as it worked with a single Keras default models as we create, and so it could be fitted, compiled, and saved somewhere. So next, I found out that add instance noise uh, cr makes it more stable training. Well, there is uh, a lot of information online but simply where we do this is that we add some noise to real samples and fake samples well th this is also one of the solutions how to avoid uh, vanishing gradients or exploding gradients so this is kind of but if you don't trust me and you don't want to use it you can simply comment this out and don't use it and then one of the crucial parameters is gradient penalty. Uh, and this is kind of uh, calculated on interpolated data. And it will be added to discriminator laws when we are training it. So basically, uh, we are ge generating a random normals uh, as called epsilon. And we are interpolating the samples, real samples together with fake samples. Uh, and then we are looping the back propagation and etc. Uh, we reduce the mean and we calculate the gradient penalty. And basically what you might ask, what is the gradient penalty? And it's basically, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but when we are training the generator and discriminator model, we do a prediction with, we are creating a, fake samples with generator, right? So after that, we are trying to train a discriminator and check uh, the difference between new and old, I mean, fake samples and read samples. And we don't want to make too large step here. I mean, too large difference to find in gradients so for large uh, this kind of steps that we calculate we punish the discriminator for this and yeah and it simply stabilizes the training i don't know if i try to explain it in in normal words in human words and then what we do is a our standard train step where we feed our uh, real samples and here basically we create a, a noise vector from this noise vector we, we generate a fake samples and we have a re prediction samples as, as real well we can the discriminator gives us the evaluation whether it's real or not so we know that when we give it a real samples it could should think that they are real and when we are giving a fake samples it should think that they are predicted fake so Oh, looping over and over, we are shifting the discriminator into this direction. So we, as I said, we adding some uh, real, some noise to these images, and then we are calculating this gradient penalty. And as you can see, here is the discriminator loss, and we calculate this loss between real and fake, and we add this gradient penalty of punishment, so called, and we need to multiply it well at least it's said so in a vegan gp paper and that's it and what we do we do the back propagation calculate gradients and etc and we return the some simply results in a dictionary as expected
and that's it and here is my results call back as i said and the, this is kind of you can modify it to yourself but simply uh, what i do i create a noise seed here at the initialization and each epoch while training i'm giving this seed to my model and so it is from the same noise generating images and i, I might see whether it improves or not and that's it and i of course save the plot save image of these results and um, and yeah and that's it and on epoch and i save the model uh because i i expect that it to be the best as i said it's really hard to know whether it's the best or not or not so it needs more investigation to find out how to know whether it's achieved its best uh point or not but simply it usually takes very long to train these models and that's the one of the most disadvantages of vegans and what we do next as you can see here uh i'm creating the gif output that i'll show you in a moment and i'll we can cover the results here is my reduced learning rate scheduler callback that i also add but the main idea as you can see i wanted to keep the uh, structure of tensorflow and keras how we train our models so you can use it as with fifth with callbacks and etc we simply tell how many epochs we train and we waited to finish and that's the main idea of simplicity why i chose to go this way step by step okay so i think you want to see the tensor board i already have it open here so let's see the results how uh, my graphs look like and I've, uh, here's basically these graphs and as you can see my learning rate of this chromator was decreasing and for 400 epochs and then I stopped it and trained. So here's my discriminator loss. As you can see it's, uh, it's really hard to tell whether it's bad or not loss but basically uh, theory tells that uh, when the disc discriminator loss is closer to zero, it's better. But when we are at the same moment, we are gener training a generator. Each apple for for the discriminator is it's kind of harder and harder to find whether we, our generator gave us real or bad samples. So that's why it wiggles a lot. But as I see from my own results, it's not even enough to train it for 500 epochs. Uh, I would prefer to train it somewhere to 800 or 900, but I didn't have had time to do so. Uh, so I simply stopped training here, but I already knew that my architecture and solutions worked. So I trust, trust the implementation and I can try to use it in different uh, places and then there is a general loss uh, well the theory and the paper doesn't tell what whether it's good or bad general loss it simply should wiggle around zero and that's exactly what happens and uh, who knows who knows and here is the drain gradient penalty and that's kind of okay because at the beginning it's kind of this gradient penalty was pretty high when it wasn't sure whether it's good or bad and probably the gradients were jumping around a lot so the gradient penalty was pretty high and then it decided to to simply keep dropping while training and that's pretty cool cool and also it's not on its lowest i believe i would need to train continue training but i said i didn't have time so basically it's fine for me and the general learning rate is also pretty low so uh don't worry if you want to try it by yourself i'll upload everything 
there somewhere on my maybe in google google drive and give you a link to download this model but let's see what are my the results and if i go to the models i have hold on here and here's the logs that my tensorbore right and here are the results of each epoch so let's open it and as you can see after first epoch it's uh very blurry really hard to understand what the fuck happens but we can see the faces already some kind of at least similar something similar to faces and if i go to the 10 epo as you can see it's way better already you can see the eyes noses lips and etc hairs uh, i love it and let's go even more for example to 100 uh, it's not the best yet but still it's pretty nice faces uh it's very blurry but we can see, say that's that's true that's the faces and let, let's keep moving to 200 for example uh, it's improving but really slowly so that's why i said that takes a lot of time to train it and if I go to something 400, you can see <laughs> this one looks like an alien, right? But still, as you can see, it keeps improving, improving, improving. It's better and better. This one even has the glasses. Learned what's the glasses? There's hairs and etc. Uh, I definitely, I'm saying that I trained it for a week. Uh, tried different experiments did so on etc it's really hard to train it but basically you can see it it works i uh, sim simply didn't have time to continue training because it, electricity costs a lot gpu resources cost a lot uh computer uh lets out a lot of heat so no, I, I can't do it anymore so i simply decided that it's enough for you but if you would like to tr try it play with it there's something around or etc it's up to you and if you if you find any mistakes in my, my implementation i would be glad to hear this out maybe i'm doing something wrong or maybe you can suggest better architecture but as you can see uh it's pretty amazing what are the final results these are definitely the faces we would like to see and yeah even still they they are kind of blurry but that's i think only the fault of time that i'm not training it until it's best but as you can see it's pretty amazing how it works so that's it about this tutorial i simply wanted to give you some overview of vegan gp with celebe faces how we can uh, use it how we can train it and etc and you can use it whenever you want you can my code and if you have any questions suggestions please don't hesitate to write it subscribe my channel if you think it's really useful you love this video like smash the like button if you have any questions comment and i hope this tutorial will be useful for you at least for someone it definitely will because it's kind of hard topping and well yeah and i think that's that's it about this tutorial i really spent a lot of time with it and i'm going to more exciting stuff so thank you again for watching and we'll see you in our next part so goodbye my friends see you next time